Hi guys, uh, so welcome to the third video of Spring Boot interview series. So in the first video, we covered these three questions related to relaxed binding and profiling. And in the last video, we discussed about scheduling, like how it works, what's the difference between fixed delay and fixed rate. And also we saw like how we can utilize Crone expressions in Spring Boot. So in this video, we will talk about AOP and actuator. So AOP is basically aspect oriented programming and actuator is basically used to get the production ready features. So a lot of questions can be asked about these two concepts, AOP and actuator. So let's see how it works. We will first talk about uh, AOP. So let's first understand a little bit uh, concept of AOP, like why we need AOP and what are the different terms which are being used when we talk about AOP. So AOP is aspect oriented programming and why it is used? It is used to modularize the cross cutting concerns because let's say if you have very big application right so you know like some of the functionalities like logging security transactions right they are common functionalities right uh, if even if you have let's say 50s of or hundreds of controllers right uh, so for all of them you have to do logging right and at application level you have to do security and transactions and many other scenarios right which can be modularized or separated from the core application logic. So you don't have to rewrite every time. And then if you have to change something, right, then you have to change at hundreds of places. So to avoid all that things, in most of the projects, uh, they use AOP. So when we talk about AOP, uh, so you have to understand these three terms first. So advice, right? So advice can be either before, it can be either after returning, it can be after throwing, it can be around. So these four advices are available. So basically with help of advice, Spring Boot will know like when to execute this logic, right? Because there should be something we have to tell, right? Uh, Spring Boot, uh, like, like run my logic before running this method or after running this method or during running this method or if exception is coming in the method, right? So these four advices we can give to Spring Boot with these tags, right? Before means this will run before execution of the program. After returning means once the method execution is completed. After throwing is if any method throws some error or exceptions and around means before and after both. So basically around the method. So second thing if you see here, right? So one thing is this is advice. So you have to really understand this carefully and whatever you see here, right? So this is basically an expression which we call as point cut. Okay. So it is a point cut. So with the help of point cut expression. So in this example, I'm telling the Spring Boot when any method or any class within this package gets executed, then before execution of that method, run this logic. So you can say, let's say if you have hundred of controller and you want to print some log statement right before execution. So you can use this one line and it will be implemented or it will be triggered whenever any call is being happened on any of the APIs present in the controller, right? So if I break down this one, right, this part is also very important. So if you see here, right? So this wildcard means any return type because I want to implement on all the methods and classes. That's why I am saying I don't care about return type. So that's why I am giving this wildcard here. Okay. And then this is my package name here. This is my package name. So this part, right? So this part specify any class and any method within this package. So I am saying any return type, any class, any method, and any number of arguments. So these four things you have to take care and you can modify based on the use case. Let's say if you have hundreds of controllers, right? So you want to apply on specific controllers which have specific return time. I'm just giving example. So that's why you can manipulate these four things to make your own point cut expression. So that's how it works. And this before means it will execute before any API is getting triggered inside the controller after returning. It is same. We are giving point cut here and we are also printing the result. So if you mention returning is equal to result, right? So we can also print result and the most powerful is around. So after throwing a similar, like uh, when any exception is being thrown, you can uh, print exception here. And around is very important because with the help of around, you can calculate the execution time. So in this thing, what I am doing is, so I am saying 
like whenever any method call is happening right or let's say our api got triggered so i am printing the start time here and then i am using join point dot dot so i'm using join point dot proceed which is proceeding join point right so when this line will be triggered method api logic will work and after api logic is completed i am again you know calculating the end time so which will be current time minus start time and then we can log this thing in your log send to database so this is very important concept here which is very helpful if you want to you know log how much time all the api calls are taking so i will run this program so add this package here spring boot starter aop this is the package you need and so you have to give this aspect tag here right on the class level so these two things if you do then it will work fine and if i go to my this package controller right so web controller is a part of my controllers and i have one api here users right and user id so and i have empty post api also save but i will just create like two three more apis dummy apis so likes right and here i will just say get likes and path variable i will remove here what we will do we will just say hash map just put so this is just a dummy thing okay likes so i will just say 10 so here i am giving thread dot sleep as 2 and here i am giving thread dot sleep 1 just to see if our logging is working fine okay so now we have like uh, two apis like get likes and we have get users so i will just run this method uh, run this project project is running so i will trigger the api now users 1 2 3 4 right so now and i will also trigger the other api so which is uh, likes right so here i triggered one time this api and i triggered one time this api so now if i go to the logs right so first thing is this is our start time which we printed here in the logging around so around advice got triggered and this start time got printed and then before advice got triggered which is here and we are printing before advice here and after returning advice when the method got executed successfully so after returning if you see this statement result and we are printing result here right object result result right so it is also giving us the json here so if you see name john id one two three four right and then with the help of this line the method got executed right and then if you see uh, with the help of this line they, we were able to print like executed in one zero zero six millisecond because we have thread sleep of one second right so 1000 plus 6 millisecond it took so a total time it took is 1006 millisecond and this is our path of the api which got triggered and same thing happened for second api same thing here is our json likes is equal to 10 and we have thread dot sleep of 2000 millisecond that's why it came here 2000 okay so in this way now once my this logic is ready right so if you see this is very small uh, class just 50 to 60 lines right uh, just 50 lines and even less right and if i remove all these methods and if i only need this method right so it is just a you can see just a 15 uh, lines of method but with the help of this 15 lines right no matter if i have 100 of controllers no matter how many apis i have in my controller folder now i don't have to add the code everywhere and even adding is fine but it's really a headache for developers if they want to change the logic right because let's say in future if they want to add some other logic to send this data to some other file logging database or something right then i just have to make database call here or i just have to save in file here and this logic will keep work on all the controllers and i can also play with the wildcards and i can also play uh, you know with the advices here so this is all about aop so from the interviewer perspective the interviewer will ask you this question just to see your conceptual knowledge and even the you know system design knowledge a little bit uh, because in this you are using like you are doing modularization and you are separating the core application logic from the uh, repeated concerns or you can say the concerns like logging security transactions so you're not mixing all that common concerns with the application logic so it's really good so you can tell interviewer about advice you can tell about point cut you can tell about join point and if the interviewer is giving you hands-on you can just create simple aspect file and you can just demo 
like a round method which is very useful and which can be really used uh, in a lot of places and you can just uh, write this 10 15 lines and show this demo whatever i saw you now show you now so second question is about so the second question is about actuator right so actuator basically gives us production ready features for example like you want to see the health check of your application so if i go to the same right so i will just say actuator here so if you see here so if you see with the help of actuator right all these urls are already ready for me so if i will trigger this url let's say slash health and i will go here slash health. so status is coming up right and if i want to see let's say all the threads for example right so i can use the thread dump method so if i will call this method so it is showing me all the threads here so we have the thread state runnable and this is very interesting information like i really find this information very interesting because i really like to uh, play with threads so this is all you can see like your application is running but if you want internal information about threading right this is the best url you can use thread down so it will give you all the things which is happening at the background okay and then if you see we have other useful features here we have loggers we have environment and we have info so if i will call info so so we, i have not added any info in my application properties file but you can add that here and it will start coming and this is also very good beans so whatever beans are in my project right um, so it will tell you and let's say we had web controller right so it will giving me the controller slash web controller right so the scope is singleton all that things you can see with the bean beans also okay and these are all the spring boot internal beans also which we need to run the project so the point is with the help of actuator these all are production ready codes i have not written any piece of code so it all comes with actuator package so how to add that package so you have to add in the pom.xml you have to start add spring boot starter actuator here and in your application dot properties file you have to add this management dot endpoints dot web dot exposure dot include is equal to star so it will include all the endpoints so this is about actuator so with the help of these two lines one is this one and one is this package right so all the production ready features are available to us and the best part is you can also write your custom logic so if let's say you want to override some method right so you can take the help of override here and you can see component i am giving then it is I'm using inheritance health indicator right so in that way you can override any of that actuator and you can build custom logic here and you can uh, make use of it but even if you don't use custom logic most of them you can use in your application the way they are but if you want to use like inside health sometimes you have to add liveness readiness code right so you can also add that so this is about actuator and if interviewer will ask you can just give this example like they are used uh, to give us production ready features like health check is there a uh, beans is there right threads are there so all that production ready features are there which can be used to monitor our application and see the health check and see the internal information of our, of our application thread information and it can be enabled with nancy and you can write this endpoint line to enable or include all the actuator so it is all about aop and actuator when so if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell icon for more programming content.